GMC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, our customers truly never cease to amaze us with the information during these trying times even. They're sending us valuable data to share with our with their peers really motors continue to run we keep testing motors and evaluating them and this is a great subject right and we've been here answering questions throughout this whole crisis so we're here to do a a presentation just showing this simple and this happens a lot this the title happens a lot replace the motor or the vfd it used to be pump or the motor, right? I was going to say the exact same thing. Always the pump versus the motor, but it has shifted a lot from is it the motor or the VFD? And that is a common troubleshooting scenario people find themselves in. We're here to help. So moving forward on this, this is a simple 30 horsepower motor, really. Not a lot to it. Four poles. Right. Not large, but uh, possibly critical and certainly attached to a VFD, which raises the, the, the concern. Right. Now, it happens to be it is critical because it's at a pharmaceutical. Well, that's been pharmacies are in the news tremendously trying to find a vaccine every or, day or whatever else uh, some uh things to help with the uh with the uh, virus uh, to help offset the the issues that occur with the virus but this is an exhaust fan so it's very critical and it was a technician uh, they were doing a startup it's a new pharmaceutical company and uh they received a fault code on the variable frequency drive uh meaning electrical fault alarm so that's pretty vague. It is, yeah. And often they're going to ask, hey, if you contact the drive manufacturer and say, hey, what's, what, what do they think? They're going to want you to check the motor because they always worry that the motor is the, the primary cause. Well, what's the first thing they did? Contacted them. And they replaced the VFD. First they, didn't thing. Even, they didn't really even contact the motor yet. They just said, well, let's, it's given us a fault. It must be a faulty VFD. Right. And all too often... The VFD replacement is the cheapest of the possible options, right? A lot cheaper to replace a drive as far as resources and time than to go yank a motor out and replace a motor. Well, they, they failed safe here then, and they essentially did just that. They replaced the drive. Uh, the VFD was not the issue. Surprise, they, they, surprise. They reinstalled yeah. the VFD. They installed the motor to the VFD, and lo and behold, this is what they got. Same issue, same fault code. So... They called in a technician who had recently just purchased the technology, and within three minutes, they were able to come up with some pretty interesting data, and this is what the data presented, in, and you'll see our fault zone here, but looks like power circuit and state are in red. Right. This is uh, very consistent with what you'd expect from a drive motor relationship, but you got to like these pre-existing alarms that allow the focus on where the problem really is. So the power circuit is in red because it's at 52% resistive imbalance. What does that mean? That is huge. We're talking about resistive imbalance. You're talking about the, the pathway or the continuity, con continuity between the starter and the motor through the phases and back. Those three should be almost identical in any three-phase system. In this situation, they're way way outside the normal parameters. We usually see less than 1% on most motors that we test. Absolutely. Now, we're not showing it, but the stator actually was at 99% inductive imbalance. Yeah, what is that telling you? 99% means that we are, are, are so offset in the magnetic balance between phase A, B, and C, it, it makes you think we've probably lost some turns uh, for it to be that extreme. I mean, you, it's not unusual to see, you know, you know 5% inductive imbalance on most low-voltage motors. But to see 99%, we've severely lost turns in this situation. Now, what's the first thing you normally do? You go out into the field, and, and we've said it in prior case studies, with uh, a multimeter and a megometer. So often the, the people rely purely on the megometer to, to make that decision. You know, I'll save the, save the world with a multimeter and a megometer, and it just doesn't always work out that well. Uh, we love the fault zone approach to looking at the insulation to see what's going on, but all too often the amplitude of insulation may, may mislead uh, some true facts about whether the insulation is in good quality. So if you would have went out there with a megometer, you would be in the gigom range, and you would say, check check not the motor not the motor can't be the motor must be the drive but we already followed that that is not that is the issue so diving a little deeper the next test is our standard test and like i said within three minutes you have a good understanding of what's going on with this motor and red is bad always so we'll see here this is the first test that they took 41 percent uh resistive imbalance 99 percent inductive imbalance mm. 
And you know, you talk about this being on a uh, on a brand new facility. Very often, they're relying on on you to go out with some type of equipment to check off on these new installations before you take ownership. If all you had was a megometer, you'd have checked off on the system, and you'd have owned a faulty mechanism or a faulty motor. Right, and and they did some. So in between these tests here, it looks like they changed leads a little bit just to see. We we do that as a troubleshooting procedure. Why don't you change the leads just to see if the fault travels with you absolutely credit to the technician for making sure hey or is there something we're doing differently on the on the on the connection or something wrong by swapping test leads uh ensuring that the fault moves with them you know with the test leads on the new phase means that it's definitely a problem not just a a, 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 a hookup issue uh from the technician so that after ha and they needed this information that they could send to the motor manufacturer that said hey this is the information we're collecting from this brand new motor um, what are your thoughts? Well, their thoughts were, we're going to send you a new motor. <laughs> right. And the motor was really, it was under warranty. So none of this was a cost from a warranty standpoint. So, but the real cost was we've already, it's in the plant. We have to have personnel take the motor out, take the drive out. That's at a substantial cost of close to $5,000. Mm. And thank goodness this didn't, you know, uh, affect production once they actually started, you know, being on the hook for, for, for product going out the door. Yeah, and we had to involved in, in this case here. There were a lot of union representatives that were involved because there were a lot of different pieces to the puzzle to get this motor because it was hanging from a ceiling and you had to have many different trades involved to get this out. So that 5000 may be a, a very shallow estimate of what Just truly was the number right. was. Well, that brings us to the end of this uh, case study, and it was very simple. It's a just another ramming home of quality assurance and why it's important to test it before you accept it. But as always, we like to thank you for your time. And if you have anything that you'd like to share with us, please, by all means, give us a call or go to our website and, and contact us there. And until then, you all stay safe, and we'll, we'll be putting a presentation out in the near future for everyone to enjoy. Have a great day.